I'm Martin Luck. I'm a second year economist at Trinity College, Cambridge, and I'm also the um, president of the Cambridge University Finance and Investment Society, and I'm also the Overseas Welfare Officer of the Trinity College Students' Union. A day in the life here can't really be classified into sort of one particular type because there's always so much going on. But I guess for me, I normally wake up around 8 to go to lectures at 9 and then normally I'm at the lecture site from around 9 to 1 because sometimes there are breaks between lectures. And so after one I go grab lunch and after lunch go back to my room and study for a little bit. And then more often than not I'll have a supervision in the afternoon or some sort of um, meeting that I have to go to. And then in the evening it's usually either a dinner with the, you know, with the finance society or a dinner with friends or some sort of possibly some wine tasting or something like that. And then in the evening it's much more sit down and look, look, look over notes, look over lectures, do assignments and maybe sleep. During weekends um, it's a lot more relaxed because obviously you don't have lectures. Every so often because we're so close to London, maybe halfway through the term when the term's really getting to you, you can catch a train, take 45 minutes to go to London and maybe have the day off. And so that's something that I can do maybe once a term, just to get away from things, get away from the Cambridge bubble. Tell me a little bit about what it means to be in Trinity College at Cambridge. I think it's really just a very unique experience because being at one of the most prestigious universities in the UK and if not the world is really a really strong privilege to be here mm -hmm. and also I think that having all the history and seeing all these buildings are hundreds of years old and the very same paths that you know Newton and Lord Byron and all, all these very intellectual people walked I think it's really it makes you have a very special sense of place and I feel that <clears throat> Yeah, yeah it's, it's a short time here, 33 years, and so every single day walking past the Great Court Fountain, taking in everything, it's, you've got to re really make sure you make the most of it. Cool facts about this cloister is that apparently um, this was the cloister in which Newton tested for the speed of sound. And so apparently he just stood at one end of this, this hall and just clapped and you can hear quite a distinct echo um, of, this, of, the, of the hand clap and this is how he tested for the speed of sound using a pendulum or something like that. Can I try? Go for it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's another me. <laughs> So outside of class, um, can you tell me a little bit about like the different clubs and organizations you're involved in? Sure, sure. So outside of class, Cambridge is renowned for its many, many different societies. And so there are both societies within colleges and also outside within Cambridge. And so the one that I spearhead is the, the Cambridge University Finance and Investment Society. And this is more along the lines of career societies. And so what this the idea behind these societies is that they help connect and host you know, networking events, company presentations to help connect students with firms and for example in London so for example some big investment banks or asset managers might come and speak to students about you know, what it's like to work in the industry and we help them by advertising to students via Facebook and by email and things like that. And we also have many different social events as well so we have many um, dinners, we have you know, drinks events to really get students to meet with people who want to pursue or are interested in a similar career. How cool! So you're sort of like connecting these big companies with a bunch of really talented people. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's a two-way two street. So they, a lot of um, firms particularly like to hit Hunnam Cambridge because it's a, you know, we have a lot of very talented people. So for, for us, it's very, um, it's a great, it's a great experience to work with um, firms who want to, you know, find the best of Cambridge talent. So tell me a little bit about what it means to be like the president of the society. Um, I think it was, it was quite a lot of work because um, as the president you are essentially in charge of a committee of around 18 people and you are the main point of contact between the society and all your sponsor firms and so you're sending emails and taking calls from all these people from these very famous big institutions, these right. big banks and so it's quite nerve-wracking at first but I think it's a very very good um, leadership opportunity to really get involved with things that do matter so you know like the, all these companies they spend a lot of money hosting these events in Cambridge and it really matters to them to get the best of talent for every single year and so for me it was good to meet and really 
get to work with people of who you know like the same industry that I was in, but also the problem solving, the handling decisions on the on the you know very stressful situations, mm -hmm. and also being sociable. You know, be at, at at these dinners, meeting and networking with many many people around the industry. I think is a very worthwhile experience, and I would highly suggest anyone to um, give it a go. Uh, tell me a little bit about the program overall. What does the degree require? How many hours a week are you in class? That sort of thing. Okay, so I think for me it's a three-year degree. Mm -hmm. And um, in the first year we take five papers and then afterwards we take, we take four. And so um, for me the Cambridge Economics course I think is quite math-based. But having said that, there are also many um, papers that have essay writing in it. So in the first year there's quite a lot of variety. So we take things like microeconomics, macroeconomics and maths. But we also have two interesting papers, called one called um, like politics, so it's like politics and social aspects of economics, and another is British economic history. And so those two are much more um, reading papers where you have to look into sort of more, some more research papers and really go into a more holistic view of economics, whereas the first, the macro, micro and maths are much more sort of theoretical based. And so I think there's a quite nice mix of that. Um, and especially when you get into second year and third year, you get a, in the second year you get a choice of one paper, and in the third year you get a choice of two papers. And so you can very much tailor your course to what you are personally interested in, which I think is really great. In terms of your experience here, now that you've been here for a while, what have you found has been the most surprising thing? The most surprising thing, I think, is just how quickly time passes. <laughs> because um, when I came here, I thought it would be you know, a lot of study, very high pressure. But in fact, life is so independent and so varied around here. Every day could could vary from a full day of studying to you know a full day of meeting meeting people, networking, have, having meals with friends, and so um, just a huge variety and how much you enjoy it. I think for me, um, I I, ca I came here thinking that um, I'd really have to stretch myself to um, you know, use every single second to make sure I understand every bit of my notes and things like that. But in reality, there's a lot of people around to help you out as well. And so there'll be friends who always are there to have a chat with you if you're feeling a bit down and there'll be multiple people having the same essay crisis. Right. And so it's really a, a great big community which I really, really enjoy being part of. If you were going to give advice to someone who's, you know, overseas, thinking about going overseas for college, for university, what advice would you give them? I think it would be to be bold and be daring, I think, because for me, coming from New Zealand, you had no idea where your standing was against the people across the world, the people from, you know, from Eton or from similar, you know, very prestigious high schools around the UK and around the world. And so I think it's just to believe in yourself and really go out and try everything that there is to offer, what the world has to offer. Because I think if you don't apply to these places and you don't give it a, your best shot, then you never really know right. where, where, you could, where you could end up. If you like this video and want to find out more about top universities, please subscribe.